March 21st, 2011, I went with my dad on an amazing journey that brought me halfway around the world. Welcome to India. So Delhi is a whole new world. There's literally 16 million people in a space probably the size of Denver. Um, out on the street, there just isn't enough room for everybody, so there's cars and camels and uh, elephants and uh, uh, scooters and you know, uh, human rickshaws and all kinds of crazy amounts of traffic just trying to get wherever they're going. I guess that brings us to one of the biggest differences between North America and India is that so much of the life is on the street and so much of our life tends to be, you know, behind the front door. It can be positive, it can be extremely negative too, it can turn into a, a soap opera pretty quickly because of the drama and because the families are old and because they're not mobile, um, they've been there for 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years. Um, so there can sometimes be old grievances, but there's also a great sense of community and there's a great sense of friendship. For newcomers, India is, well, overwhelming to say the least. Throughout this video, I will share some of my observations that stayed with me long after my plane touched down back home in Denver. Observation number one, look both ways before you cross the street. Be careful when you cross the road. Not applicable here. They just sort of got to hope for the best. Because of the ridiculous amounts of traffic and the complete disregard of stoplights, making your way around India will keep anyone on their toes. Observation number two, and you thought AP calculus was hard. In Delhi, I went to the American Embassy School and interviewed kids and faculty on the differences between an American education and an Indian one. And damn, do we have it easy at Kent. You need to work your ass off to get just where you need to be. In Indian schools, you don't use a graphing calculator. You know almost everything by heart. Um, so in an interest of probably bringing through so many millions of kids, they had to come up with very sort of you know, more factory-like uh, school um, teaching styles. And the emphasis was just on assessments, on assignments, on road learning. I don't think my child understood a single chapter that was being done in school. He was asked to reproduce the next day, and he was marked on it. So and now I have shifted him to another school. Because of the emphasis on school, and only school, there are no extracurricular activities such as sports, arts, or even musical programs. Schools also go six days a week, and because of the strict culture, boys and girls go to separate schools. Observation number three, boys are touchy. So, if you think about it, um, boys are always with boys. They really can't interact very much with girls, and certainly can't be touching and, uh, you know, arm around a girl and all that kind of stuff. And so, men hold hands, uh, and boys hold hands together, they're just friends. It's not a, uh, a homosexual thing or anything like that. And uh, it looks strange to Americans, um, but it's really a warm, kind of friendly uh, way of interacting. Observation number four. First comes marriage, then comes love. One of the weirdest concepts to understand, something that even affects Indian teenagers, is arranged marriages. Uh, isn't that insane? Imagine being 15 years old and having a husband and expecting to have kids, having to take care of a house. It's crazy. Um, arranged marriages here are still the primary way that you know people will get married. And it's maybe a little bit harder for people that uh, have never grown up with this concept of an arranged marriage to think about it and to try to wrap their head around it. Um, but for them, it, it's, it's how it's been done. That's how it's always been done. You know, their parents had an arranged marriage, so they'll have an arranged marriage. Their grandparents had an arranged marriage. Observation number five. Check out those pearly whites. Have you ever been shopping and needed a tooth pulled? Well, now your answer is here. Meet the roadside dentist, commonly found in most deli markets. This crazy cat uses modern tools such as hammers and nail clippers to offer a real bang-up job. Observation number six. This ain't no modern family. Many people get the impression that the older, more traditional ways of Indian parents keep family units close together. We follow traditions. Uh, we respect our culture. And uh, there's a huge sense of belonging. And uh, there's a lot of stability in Indian families. A lot of stability. There. Um, they're going to be with their family, the community is tight. We felt that the 
uh, though much poorer than the average American, the, 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 the Indians that we interacted with on average seemed sort of as happy. The parents, uh, they actually revolve their lives around their children. Whereas in the West, it's not the case. So do Indian parents expect a lot more of their kids? Yes. Uh, in the conventional sense, yes. Uh, there are a lot of expectations. The kids are seen as sort of serving the family unit because parents, grandparents all live in the same house. They're all together. They're there as kind of labor in a way in the family unit, so they have to work a lot. Um, the uh, Indians are stricter than I guess Americans, I would say. Observation number seven. Cricket rules. One of the cool things is when we were there was the, they had the World Cup of Cricket, which is, cricket is the national sport in India. It's like, uh, this would be rolling up the Super Bowl and the World Series all into one. And um, people were just crazy with the national fervor over the cricket matches. At uh, midnight, we were wandering around the streets and people were zooming around the streets, uh, beeping horns, waving flags, standing up, making scenes, and uh, it was crazy. Hey, India! Observation number eight. Be all that you can be, not U.S. and Indian teens lead very different lives. It took me a while to realize how lucky we Americans really are. For someone like Kavita, whose single mother works hard to put food on the table for her three kids, she is expected to do a lot more than an American teenager. Um, Kavita told me how she devotes her free time to helping her sister study to get into a nursing school. Kavita's mom determined that she is not as smart as her sister and therefore will soon be married off to a man she has never met with no chance of getting an education. It truly amazes me how Kavita has no choice in the matter and simply accepts sacrificing her teenage years for her sister. The way that we get things is we have to work hard for it. And what I find for American students is that they get what they want from their parents or socially. American teenagers have life, I guess, easier. I have no face that's sorry. Sorry, no face that's sorry. Bye, bye, bye. Let's go. Let's go. Observation number nine. Baby, baby, baby. Oh, baby? One of the places we traveled to was an orphanage called Arusha. When we were there, we asked a cute little girl who probably had never seen an iPod before in her life what her music tastes were. And uh, after telling us the name of an Indian pop star, our very next uh, words out of her mouth were Justin Bieber. So it was funny how even in India, there's some uh, pop cultural icons that trans, you know, transcend international boundaries. On my trip, I saw and learned many amazing things that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. From arranged marriages, to strict educations, to a male-dominated society, the Indian culture definitely differs from our community. Some of the kids that I talked to said that their families live on less than $5 a day. I hope that we at Kent won't always take our lives for granted and will appreciate how blessed we really are. Right now I'm riding on the back of a rickshaw cart in India. This place is pretty cool. Oh, it has begun. Oh, dear, you look so lost. As the red and tears are shed, this world you must have crossed, you said. You don't know me, and you.